Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. The following is a prototype. Please keep that in mind. I am not a medical professional. I am not an expert in pandemics. I am not well versed in any of this. I'm just a tech guy trying to help. This is a prototype and not an approved medical device. I have not received any feedback and I cannot verify its effectiveness against the current situation. I don't have the equipment nor the expertise to do so. If you do, I urge you to help improve the design, contact those that can help, and make this safe for use. Comment with your helpful feedback below. So I'd read an article about the shortage of PPEs or personal protective equipment, particularly face masks. And I decided to go ahead and take a look on CDC's website. And sure enough, it does mention the use of homemade masks, such as bandanas and scarves. And I thought there might be something that I might be able to do to help. I don't know. So I saw all this information. It does recommend that uh, you use caution when using this option and ideally it would be used with a face shield that covers the entire front of the face. So with that I decided to fire up Gravity Sketch which is my virtual reality application that I use for designing models in 3D and it just so happened to have this handy face that I could use to come up with a rough outline of what exactly it is I wanted to do. So I sketched out the basic outline to a face, just like this. Now this is a reenactment. This is not the exact design that I came up with, but I just wanted to show you basically how it is I came up with the initial design. So once it was all laid out, I then took it and went to the save here, exported it to the cloud, and brought it down to my PC. So I moved over here, entered a name for it, and saved it. And that was pretty much it. Then I loaded it up into my 3D modeling design application, MOI 3D, which is one I've been using for about two years now. And it's a pretty cool application. I brought it in, traced the outline of the virtual reality design model, and then I went into the rail revolve here and selected the profile curve, the rail curve, and then selected the start and end and did a revolve on it and then came up with this basic design. So I was like okay let's give it a shot here but of course it was too thin so I had to extend the size here by extruding so I went into the extrude tool gave it uh, an option of about two millimeters and now it was starting to take up a little bit of form. Next I had to design a filter cap to go on the ends of the filter air intake. Notice there's two, one on each side, and, and notice how each of the air filters are pointing away from the, I guess, patient or subject. I figured that would make sense. Uh, I'm not a medical professional, so I do not know, but it seemed to make the most sense to me rather than having a filter facing directly in the line of fire, I guess you'd say. So anyway, after that I selected the model and went to export and export it to an STL file. From there, I loaded it up into my splicer software, which in this case is Flash Print. It's made by Flash Forge and it's one that I've used since I got my printer. It was a Christmas present from my mom a couple of years ago and man, I love it. Design all kinds of stuff. And <laughs> anyway, so we'll go in here and we'll change the infill. Uh, for an actual production use, you probably want to go 100%, but all of this is prototype stuff, so I use fast settings and uh, lower infills. Then I send it to the printer, and here you can see the face mask printing in PLA. That is PLA plastic. It's non-toxic. And this is basically what it looks like while it's printing. And then once it was done, I took it off the printer. I just use this little scraper tool and pull it off the bed. Pops off real easily. 
And there we have it. Now we got to take the supports off. So I'll take it over to the desk and we'll go in here and remove the support. Some of the rough edges that you see are due to the supports, not to the printer itself. And as you can see here, I went through a number of different revisions of this prototype to come up with the one that we have right now. And this is what it looks like without the supports on it. Looks okay. You can see a few rough edges there around the air intake. It doesn't uh, interfere with the usability of the device. At least from what I can tell. This is what the end caps look like. Or the filter caps. They just snap in and hold whatever filter material that you use in there, which I don't know what filter material to use, so that's why I'm putting this video out. Okay, so here we go. This is a uh, <laughs> pretty cool lighter. It's USB, doesn't use any fuel or anything. I have a link below if you're interested in that, but it's what I used to sear the edges of this uh, elastic band, which is something I had from a previous robotics project. So anyway, I just sear it, push it through, and then tie it off. Like so. Once it's tied off, then I sear it again. It just kind of melds it or welds it into place so it doesn't slide out or come off. Then I just clip the end and sear the end as well. The edges are rounded to help protect your face and make it more comfortable to wear. And we'll do that to the rest of them and voila, it is done. Now let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the filter material. This was a piece that was kindly donated by a Wagner's Tech Talk viewer. Thank you very much. And we'll just trace the cap here and cut out the piece and use this for the air filter. Now I'm not recommending this, this is just something I had available. I don't know what material to use for this mask, to be perfectly honest, although please check out the links in the description below and uh, that will give you some ideas on a study that was done on what type of filter material to use. And this is probably the least scientific test that you can do, but what I do is I put my hands fully over the air filtration and just to make sure that I can't breathe in. <laughs> and it works pretty good, at least for me. Some adjustments may be necessary for different face types. Now we're going to put in the filter material. And normally you'd want to be watching this and make sure that there's no gaps anywhere. But I'm trying to do this for demonstration purposes. You put the caps on and that's it. That's what it looks like. Again, I want to reiterate that this is a prototype. I've spent probably about a week working on it and making changes, and as you saw earlier, went through several iterations. It should not be used for our current situation. It is strictly a prototype at this point. I will leave links below where you can check it out and do some of your own testing or forward this video to someone who knows more about how to test it. That would be wonderful. I don't have the equipment or the expertise. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I will talk to you very soon.